Are we going? Yeah. All Mickey, right. Mickey, the, the next thing we're going to do is an update on the uh, the Denver Broncos. So take a look and, and tell them. The crazy going. horses. All right. The Broncos, what are we going to do this year? Doesn't matter. Let's talk Floyd about the players. <coughs> Floyd Little. Uh, well, the Broncos, as we were last, they were last seen hosting a uh, playoff game against the Baltimore Ravens, which they had won. They had this game won, folks. It was two minutes left in the game, and the Ravens were pinned way down on their own 20-yard line. And, I don't know, Lady Luck smiled upon the Ravens, and, and Lady Poor Defense uh, glared at the Broncos, and so they promptly gave up the, like, 80-yard uh, touchdown pass. That left the game tied. Overtime. Ravens win. I like Broncos. It. I mean, go home. I'm unbiased. <laughs> were, you uh, rooting, were you rooting for the Ravens? Actually, I, I was. At that point, I was. Where was um, your money? Your money must have been on the Ravens then. Well, um, I had a mortgage to make. You had a mortgage. <laughs> Did you have seven points plus uh, plus the Ravens or just the Ravens? Well, I I called that bookie you told me about. And total, you know, total, totally. I, I'm not into this anymore. I didn't Joey, tell you to bet on the Ravens. Joey, but if you're, you're going to ask me... It, uh, I didn't tell you to bet on the Ravens, did I? No, I, 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 I'm I, pretty sure, just by by uh, track record, yes. that, that you were going for the Broncos. Yeah, that's all you needed to know. Yeah, but I you know, I called St. Thomas, and, and I couldn't really understand what the guy was saying. It was kind of like, can I help you on your... Would you like to place a bet? You know, and I wasn't really understanding I what never saying, introduced until I got you to St. Thomas. Huh? I didn't introduce you to St. Thomas. You didn't? No, I don't know any saints. That must have been one of the that must have been one of them wise guys from back home that, that hooked me up with that number. But I was tempted and I called it and I couldn't understand what the guy was saying, but when I but I tell you what, I'll tell you when the phone call got real clear when he asked me how much money I wanted to place on the bet. Yeah. That's oh a key boy. Question. It went from can I help you or would you like to place would you like to place a bet? How much? Boy, yeah. that got clear. Yeah, he sure. wanted to know the amount. Well, maybe he wanted my say. credit card. He wanted... <laughs> so apparently I didn't teach you well enough. You don't give a bookie your credit card number. <laughs> Even if the bookie is a saint or claims to be a saint. All right. Or a saint fan? Or no, literally a saint. St. Thomas. Oh, okay. You call the Virgin Islands. I gave you the number of a guy That's in the Bronx. That's a big Bronx. misnomer. First of all, don't even go there. I gave you the number of I, right. I investigated that. There's nothing virgin about those islands. I gave you the number of a bookie in the Bronx and you end up call the Virgin Islands. What? You know the guy's back home. I mean, you know. Yeah, that's, that's why I introduced you to him. You know, the phone's dirty and, and, and you're trying to talk to the guy. And, I know, but and he's, trying to, he's trying to organize his girls and he's not paying attention to you. And, and you're like, are you still there, Lenny? You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm here, Chris. Hey, you got to come back to the neighborhood sometime. That's right. And then, and to then pay, you, probably. And then, can I hang up on you and you call me back? And I'm like, Lenny! You what kind of customer service is this? I, I have to pay for the call, and you're, and you're the one taking my money? The advantage of betting with somebody you know is that you know where to find them. And the disadvantage is that they know where to find you, too. Why don't you write a book? I've written a book. No, because I'm, I'm giving you total props here. I mean, if that's the case, and it, you, have all this, you have all this... And it shall remain unpublished. Now, <laughs> key players on the Denver Broncos season 2013 roster. Champ Bailey. He's a defensive cornerback, right? They got him from uh, Jets or something a few years ago. Champ he? Bailey's been with the with the Denver Broncos for, for years. He, probably the most seasoned player, and I have to say that, uh, uh, you know, he's been he's been the uh, he's been the the uh, the strong weld for for that team, especially on the defense. He's been the he's been the consistent one. He's been the what kind of analogy am I looking at? The 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 old man that doesn't waver. The what are all these analogies? He's been you know, the, Ray the pole Lewis. that never bends. The you know you always hear these analogies, right? He's been the Ray Lewis of the Denver Broncos or something. I like that too. All right. And I I want to say he's how old is he? He's like 36, 37? 15 years of experience. Yeah, that puts him about 37. Um, I don't know how Champ does it, but me living in the local area, local area, since we're talking about, it, I'll tell I'll tell you real quickly. He was on uh, uh, for the for the um, training camp mm -hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, one of the radio stations in Denver that are always always there, like a lot of the stations are. They interviewed him, and Champ said he's been very lucky. First of all, okay. yes, because he had a brother that was in the NFL, and like a lot of players, they. His brother got injured, and he only lasted like four or five seasons in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So Champ credits credits a lot of it to luck. But then he says, you know, he takes care of his body even in the off season. And he says the last five or six years, he's he's had to exercise as much 
the same regiment in the off season as he does uh, during tr during uh, training camp, camp all the way through to the end of the regular season, and that's mm -hmm. the only way that he's been able to play this many years. But I think you know I think the guy deserves a lot of credit. I mean, he's still able to perform at at, at an NFL level for a cornerback, and he's not the one that got. He's not the one that got his his pants beat off. It was uh, the safety or the other or the other cornerback for okay. Denver, especially in the game you're talking about, yeah. which led to their end of their season, their demise. Right. All right. Do I, you recall? That? I recall the play. I didn't know who it was that got burned. John Elway, a quarterback. What? <laughs> I was telling Joey I want him to be current. Joey's not the most internet savvy person, but we gotta have a roster that is a little more current than this one, which says John Elway is still playing quarterback. Myself. Well, okay. I'll forgive you. Um, <coughs> who does it say? Ryan Clady. Don't be a lady. From Boise, Boise State. That must be a French oh. college. Are they in New Orleans? Boise. Are oh, they Jean Prix? Boise no, State. State. Yeah. They gave, you know, when, when they drafted him, they gave him a plate of croissants, homemade, mm -hmm. and uh, brie, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, some wine, 1968 Savon Lee, I believe. Someone leave. And he said, what is all this stuff? And they said, well, you're French, right? And he From goes, bourgeois state. <laughs> <laughs> he he had to look on his and face. He, and he said, no, it's bourgeois state. Hola. 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 <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> he was trying to throw him for a loop. <laughs> which he's apparently done, Literally? done to us. Or verbally. No, verbally. Do you know he, signed, he just signed a huge, huge contract? They're paying him a That's ton of money. That's what the dollar signs are for, huh? Here he is. Yeah. Your roster. What does it make? Can you yeah. make sense of that? I'm not good. I'm not mean. good when it comes to technical. I'm not good when it comes to internet aspects. But I'm still pretty good with the old pen. Okay. Uh -huh. um, uh, Eric Decker. Um, you know, let's talk about these wide receivers. They pick up Wes Welker. Yeah. Um, we they, talked about that in May. They have Eric it's still Decker. Still an important pickup. Okay. And uh, um, going down the line here. Uh, their offensive line is actually pretty solid. Here's some names I want to mention. And again, like I always say, just, just you know, something perks, you know, or piques your interest and you want to make a comment, please like If do I it. recognize any of these names, I'll say something. <laughs> Go ahead, Joey. I get it. I'm counting on you for the football knowledge. Orlando here. Franklin. Now, if that's not a football player, or that's not a bookie from, from, uh, from, uh, uh, from, from Brooklyn, you know, I'm a monkey's uncle. Orlando Franklin? He's a tackle for the Broncos. Do you have any nieces or nephews? Do I? Do you? Yes, I do, actually. I'll talk to them about this monkey's uncle comment. So he's a monkey. I've, I've been a lot of things, and, and, and believe me, I'm sure a lot of people have called me a monkey, so I'm not going to be surprised by whatever you report back, okay? <laughs> I won't make it up. A monkey's up. Chris Harris, great first name, cornerback for these guys. I think uh, it says here he's a, he's a third year player out of Kansas. And um, we were just talking about that was one of the weak, the weak points. That was kind of like what you said in an earlier segment where, you know, everybody's kind of looking at you when you screw up. Well, when they, well, blew, when yeah. they blew the coverage, and, and uh, I believe it was uh, Mr. Anquan Bolden or it was Mr. Uh, uh, the other receiver for the, for the Ravens. Ravens. Um, Whose name I don't remember yet. Not, uh, not Jacoby Jones, but uh, I think he's with the Texans. But, uh, oh, I want to say Smith. His name is, his name is Smith. Anyway, when, when he caught that pass at the end of that AFC Championship game last year that you were referring to, uh, you know, everybody, I'm sure the safety or the cornerback on that play that, that got his pants blown off felt like everybody in the stadium, all 66,000 people were looking at him. But I think. They were, and they were. Yeah, the Broncos addressed a key weakness on their team from last season, and that was not enough players from Kansas. So they got this guy <laughs> with that you just mentioned, and they've addressed that completely. <clears throat> in fact, yeah, one thing they've incorporated in Broncos workouts. I'm not sure what that meant, but okay. Well, it's a weakness. You, you got to have some players from Kansas, and I'm about to why tell you Kansas? why. Kansas? I, I, I want to hear this. This has got to be good. It's Go. good. One of the things that's been a part of Broncos workouts this year is uh, is layups. They've done some slam dunks, reverse dunks, alley oops. They wanted to improve the players' uh, the vertical jump, especially for wide receivers and defensive backs. But you wouldn't believe it, Joey. They've got linemen. 320 pound mammoth lineman doing mammoth? doing huge big guys doing jumps you know they they can they can dunk if you can believe that then they can they can sky they can if, really sky and so this is part of the Kansas influence if my niece you know happens to get sick or unfortunately breaks a bone or something they can double in a tutu and, and do her ballet at the local high school uh, they sound awful limber well certainly <laughs> yeah I suppose.
<laughs> you know, they may not look too much like your niece, but they could jump no. as well as your niece. Does your does ballet involve a lot of jumping? I, I believe it does. We're right. going to have to report back to you on our next segment. You have to do a salt, uh, a somersault, a double salt, a, a, a two and a half salt, and a three pepper. Okay. You haven't heard of a three pepper, but a three pepper is actually the, the, the most difficult of all the jumps. And, and if you're like me, it reminds you of, of some, of the, uh, some of the dives that you see swimmers do when they're talking about, well, when you're doing a, when you're doing a three pepper and you're in a tutu, I mean, you end, up with your, <laughs> you end up with your legs where your arms are supposed to go and vice versa. It's, it's, a, it's an awful gluey twist them, twist them and, and, and uh, all gooed up effect. It sounds painful, Joey. But <laughs> it's like a pretzel. It's like a pretzel. It's like a pretzel. Speaking of salt, when we have a, a, one of our upcoming segments is going to be off-season arrests by NFL players. Not just arrests, but uh, suspensions, disciplinary actions, you etc. And we'll, we'll cover some assaults when we get to that, too. I have a question for you. Um, I don't know. Did you know there's a player on the, uh, you know, there's a player on the Broncos named Jeremiah Johnson. Now I do. What does he do? Yes, you do. Okay. Yes, you do. He's a running back and he's in his fourth year. So I, I beg, I beg to ask the question: How did this guy get by us? I, don't know. I pick up on that stuff. So does Gina A too. Jeremiah Johnson. What is Are he going out he... there with a Davy Crockett uh, uh, raccoon <laughs> under his under his helmet when he's playing or what? Are you saying that we you knew him from a previous team or a different team? I know from a movie that starred that starred uh, 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 Robert Redford, and this was one of his first movies, Jeremiah Johnson, where he was the he was the uh, the he was Davy Crockett. He lived out in the, yeah, kind of like he lived out in the West. It was a it was a pretty famous movie. Well, it must, Jeremiah Johnson. <laughs> it must have been. I think it was a different guy. It must have been. Um. Anyway, they're talking about the. Uh, go ahead, please. All power to the Broncos, the crazy horses. For those of you that have flown into or out of the Denver airport, there are a couple things that you've probably noticed. Oh, <coughs> here we go. One is the security line as you're flying from Denver is unbelievably long, especially on a busy travel day. You, it's on the main level, right? And they've got, you know, the rows that you get in like cattle. We were talking about the cattle effect. Mm. Thank you, Joey, with the sound effect. But so it's like a big long line and it snakes back and forth. I have spent seriously at least 30 minutes at one time just in that stinking line just to get up to the point where I can go through the security screening. Mm. Yeah, what an experience. Um, and I'll stop that one there. But the other one is the crazy horse, right? You know the crazy horse. It's a that's bronco. What it's, that's what it's called. That's it's, what it's called. And it's got these red eyes. You see him as you're on your left as you're leaving Denver International Airport, and uh, it's really tall, standing up on his hind legs. Probably 20 feet, somewhere around there. Oh, it's huge, colossal. I don't know. It defies measurement, but it's kind of spooky. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't take a five-year-old or a four-year-old child past the crazy horse at nighttime. Oh, totally. Unless they were asleep. Totally, totally. Right. Uh, I, I could see kids would be scared of it. I'm, I, I'm surprised we never talked about it before because when, when they first built it, or when I first noticed it after, after it was built. It gave me the heebie-jeebies. I was like, a blue, a blue horse? I'm moving over. You still have them? Huh? You still have the heebie-jeebies? No, I took some. I took some medicinal marijuana, and it cures all, really. All right, now I feel better. <laughs> so, so then, that but explains if, a lot too. For those of you that are not aware, and obviously, you know, you never been to Denver, or you're planning on coming to Denver, he's exactly right. It's 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 a blue it's a blue horse. It's huge, and it's on its legs like this. You know, red so eyes. it's on its hind legs up, and it's got these red ruby eyes. And, and there was a conspiracy going on because in, in our next show, we're going to oh, talk oh. about the internal conspiracy, but we're going to tease them here. All right. And all I'm going to say, but before we finish with Denver, I need to mention some people because you're Please. high on these guys. In the last show, you said these guys would win the AFC. I did, and I still think they will. And um, unless somebody proves me wrong, I'm going to continue saying this till the season's over. You're sticking to that story. Well, it's because they have Peyton Manning. He's clearly performed last year at his, up to his potential that he displayed for so many years with the Colts. He's got all the, the fabulous receiving core that he had last year, plus Wes Walker. Welker. Yes. And, uh, Just got there this year, but and, yes. And, you know, the defense is still going to be strong. Why shouldn't they be back? A um, couple, couple of issues to whatever level you want to say they are, and everybody's going to have an opinion about this, how key these players are. Dan uh, Copen has been the center with the Broncos for quite a while now. Um, he's he's been uh, ten years at least. He's thirty three years of age. So like a lot of centers, like a Jeff Saturday, for example, who who's you know was with uh, 
was with Peyton Manning in Indianapolis and went on to the Green Bay Packers and was a was a staple there and a steady player and then all of a sudden retired. This Dan Copen just got hurt the other day and the injury actually puts him out for the rest of the season. And for you folks that don't know, that can often be a big deal. That handoff and that timing between the center and the quarterback is a big deal. So that's the Denver Broncos. I do think, they, again, they're going to get the AFC West championship game, but I like my Texans. Okay, we shall see. Adios.